Hey guys, better late than never, but uh, I wanted to post this video. Real, it's going to be really fast. It's going to be about the nomenclature of ethers and thiols, and it doesn't take very long. And so it'll only be about five or 10 minutes because uh, again, there's just not much to it at this point once you've been doing naming for the better part of six months. So, uh, we're going to move on in organic chemistry too. We're moving on to the ether chapter and then we're really going to start to get crazy with uh, aromatic compounds. And so let's just spend this next five or 10 minutes talking about naming and then we'll uh, put it away for a little bit and we'll talk about the reactions of thiols and ethers a little bit later. So let's get right into it. All right, let me start my screen share here. Okay. All right, so let's just recall how we would name an alcohol. So if I were to have a chain that had an alcohol on it, an OH group, a hydroxyl group, then this makes it an alcohol. And so there's not much new going on here from the perspective of naming. Remember from alcohols, the OH group is now the priority functional group. And so we're gonna, when we number the chain, we'll number the chain in the direction that gets us to that priority functional group uh, the fastest. This is the same reason why we would number alkenes in the direction that gets us to the double bond the fastest because an alkene is a priority functional group over an alkane. And so this would be one, two, three, four, five carbons. And so this is pent and two all or two pentanol. So if I were to do the same sort of thing, and I'm going to start off with thiols. If I, a thiol is an SH group, remember sulfur and oxygen are in the same group. And so that means they have some of the same chemistry. And so they sort of make the same uh, types of compounds. And so what we have here is a thiol. And so this would be one, two, three, four, five, still pen. Tain, and we go ahead and say ain two thiol or two pentane. Oops, that's not thione, it's thiol. And it's really that simple. And so again, it's it, if it's a SH group on an alkane chain by itself, then what we're dealing with is a thiol. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, often the SH group appears with other functional groups. And if you consult the list of priorities, you'll find that SH isn't a particularly high priority group when it comes to other heteroatoms or, or groups that have heteroatoms in it. And so one example would be, what if I had a molecule that had an OH group and an SH group? In this case, OH is an example of something that is higher priority than a thiol. And so what happens is, is that the molecule isn't a thiol anymore from a naming perspective. It's a alcohol in this case because the alcohol is a higher priority group. So what that means is that the SH becomes a substituent. And this is the first time when uh, we have a parent name for something and we change it, uh, if it, if it becomes a substituent, its name changes. So the situation with thiols when they're by themselves is that we call them thiols, but when they're not by themselves, when they're lower priority and become a substituent, they're called mercaptos. And so that's the substituent name for SH when it appears in a group that is higher priority than the SH, like it is in this particular example. 
So when it comes to numbering, we're still going to number in the direction that gets us to the highest priority group. One, two, three, four, five, six in this case. OH being the higher priority group, so we'd want to get to that direction faster. So this is five mercapto hex N two. Oh, you know what I did? I numbered this totally wrong. I'm glad I caught myself before I posted this on YouTube. Let's go back and do all of this again. I'm glad I've got a reverse button. And so let's go back and number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, easy to make mistakes. So this is a six mercapto. Hep ten three all, or it could still be six mercapto. three heptanol. Either of these names are acceptable uh, as far as IUPAC is concerned in this course. So of course I'm not, if you take a look, both the thiol at the six position and the OH group at the uh, three position, they both could be, be stereo centers. And so they could have some stereochemistry associated with it. So remember at the end of the day, you still have to figure out R and S for uh, the different stereo configurations if that stereochemistry is shown. So at this point, don't forget that stereochemistry is something that I just assume you understand. And if you don't, you should go back and watch that stereochemistry video. Okay, let's get into ethers real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this stuff. And an ether is a functional group that involves an oxygen that's sort of sandwiched in the middle of a, um, excuse me, of a couple of different uh, alkane chains or uh, alkyl chains. And so the naming for this goes really easily. I think it's pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the different alkyl chains and we're going to name them based on the number of carbons. And so this one has two carbons to the, to the right of the oxygen. So that's ethyl. This one has three carbons to the left, so that's propyl. And then what we do is we essentially take the two groups and we put them together in alphabetic, or alpha, alphabetic order, and then we add the word ether at the end. And so at the end of the day, this is ethyl, propyl, ether. It's just like that. It's really that simple. And I, I'm not going to get much more complicated than that. Uh, you, you know, if I put a group here, then that would be, that would be methyl, ethyl. Oh, I alphabetize it. So sorry. So I guess M, it still comes before P. So methyl, ethyl, propyl, ether. But I don't think that we should get any further down the ether rabbit hole. Remember that naming can be a really complicated um, situation because there are so many different possibilities for how you can put together atoms. And in this course, it really is important to get a basic idea about how to name things, but we're not to get down the, the, as far down the rabbit hole as you possibly could. And so we could certainly complicate this situation a lot more, and we're just not going to in this case. But there is one other situation that I want to make sure that I address, because they are, well, they used to be certainly really hot areas of chemistry. They're not so much anymore, but they're called crown ethers, and they are in every chemistry textbook. So what it involves is a ringed ether connected to, uh, uh, connected by varying uh, numbers of carbons. And so at the end of the day, they're, uh, why they called crown ethers, and I'm not going to show you in this particular uh, video, because I'm, I'm not going to draw it, I'm not that good, is that the 
actual three-dimensional shape of these molecules kind of looks like a crown. And so that's why they're called crown ethers. And so there's a systematic way for you to name these particular molecules. And it involves the word crown. And, and then it involves some numbers. And so the numbers are going to indicate how many oxygens are in the ring and how many atoms are in the ring total. And so when I take a look at this molecule, it's called 12 crown four. And the reason it's called 12 crown four is because, well, it's got four oxygen atoms that goes at the end and 12 atoms total. So let's just count them up real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, ah, 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 12 atoms total. And this is a crown ether. And so uh, this is why we're going to call it uh, crown. And so there are essentially two other common crown ethers that you should be able to identify and name. It involves one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I need to make this a little bit better. It involves five oxygen atoms in the ring. And notice they're always going to be separated by two carbons. And so this one is going to be a crown five. And how many atoms total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 crown five. And so what I want you to do is let's take one little last moment to take some crown ether practice and let's draw 18 crown six. And so if I give you the name and have you draw a crown ether, you have to disasso disassemble it in the reverse fashion. Remember the six, one, two, three, four, five, six is the number of oxygens and the 18 is the number of total atoms in the ether. They're always going to be separated by a two carbon chain. And there I have the 18 crown six. And I, I, for the, the last thing that I'll do in this video is just point out why these things are interesting. And we'll talk about that more in, a, in another video. Remember there's going to be lone pairs on all these oxygens. And what's cool about these crown ethers is that they solvate metal ions. So they, talk, they solvate metal ions and they do so in solutions that are typically somewhat nonpolar. And so depending on the number of oxygens, you get a different number of, uh, you get a different number of, uh, you get a different size in the ring and the different sizes in the ring can ultimately solubilize different ions. And so that's it for naming ethers, naming crown ethers, naming thiols and naming thiols when they're substituents. In other words, using the substituent name Mercapto. Next thing we're gonna do is get into some of those reactions and mechanisms for those things. And you know, that's gonna be a little bit more heady. And so we're gonna leave it there for now. You guys have a good one.